Yo, 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 peace everyone, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of the Two British Nerds, hosted by myself, the DJ Sava, the C-A-V-A. Remember to check me out on the Instagram at Two British Nerds, and that's with a Z, Two British Nerds with a Z. Uh, check out my Twitter at C-A-V-A uh, DJ, of course, a YouTube page, uh, Two British Nerds with a Z. And if you have an iDevice, iPhone, iPad, and or iDevice in general, just um, hit me up because I'm available on the uh, on the iTunes podcast app, so you guys can um, listen to me, download me, and get interactive, man. Um, that's two British nerds with his with a Z, um, as well. Um, so yeah, man. Welcome again, guys, and uh, thank you for the love and support. Shout out to all the people on Instagram loving the podcast, been getting a lot of positive feedback, which is pretty cool and nice. Um, yeah, so let's get right. Um. Onto it, man. Um, it's been uh, like a very, very slow week. Not really a lot's been happening in the nerdy world of uh, the world, the the um, uh, the the nerdy world of uh, geeks, I guess, and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it's been kind of a slow week. Um, but yeah, I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed this week. I um, just wanted to say big shout out to my friend Annie, uh, who uh, I know Annie always pronounced her name wrong. Who went over there to NYCC Comic Con, which was just a few weeks ago, and she, you know, um, she managed to get me one of the Stanley uh, Funko Pop uh, bobbleheads. You know, I was really after it. You know, me being in the UK, uh, you can't get nothing in the UK, and if you do get it, you know, the the resale price is just so. You know, I call I call them vampire prices because they, you know, they um they resell so much. So, um, she got me it, nice gold um gold pop of Mr. Stanley himself and what was really nice was you can only get that Funko literally NY at NYCC from the Stanley booth so much love and respect to you thank you so much I love it so much it's my first pretty much exclusive that actually came from overseas and it's actually from you know a comic con in the state so I'm really happy about that thank you so much the price was amazing retail price um you know I believe it was $25 amazing which is like 16 15 pounds you know um, you know, while they were trying to resell it on eBay for like 50, 60, you know, one of the comic book shops I called up, um, I wanted to basically buy it. They were, they said to me 74 pounds plus shipping. I was like, no, 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 no way. You can keep that. So I'm happy to get it. Also, um, I'm very happy with, um, what do you call it guys? I managed to get also, um, my Collector Corpse pack. So it's my first time actually getting anything from Collector Corpse. I'm pretty, I was pretty happy with the t-shirts. Uh, just the badges and of course the uh, the Morbius um, um, Funko pop um, you know was pretty cool there's actually two so I uh, will actually they give you they give you one or the other so there's a standard Morbius and then there's the zombie Morbius with the teeth coming out and I actually was hoping to get the, the one of the teeth you know the zombie Morbius and I got it so I'm pretty happy I'll be ordering my um my Guardians pack of them at the end of the month so I'm looking forward to that to see what they do, you know, for the end of the year. It'd be pretty cool. I'm 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 assuming it's gonna be something amazing because it's the end of the year. Um, really t- happy to see what kind of Funkos they're gonna be given out, you know, because they've done all the Guardians of the Galaxy, they've done all the villains, all the main characters, um, you know, the good guys, the bad guys. So who's left to do? You know, I'm hoping for a Thanos with a uh, an Infinity Gauntlet, Ooh, or maybe add the Warlock, or. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the Watcher. I don't know. Anything, man. I'm, I'm just happy to... I'm happy. I'm can't wait to get it. Um, and and I also picked up um, from from uh, Forbidden Planet. Went over there. And I got myself, um, you know, the Coulson trading cards. So it's the it's the, um, it's the the trading cards from the event, the first Avengers movie, Avengers Assemble. So uh, if you guys remember the scene where Cap and Coulson are basically... In the plane, and he goes, you know, look at my cards, man. I got, I got, I got, I got these cards, man. I've been collecting them for years. Final set, you know, can you sign them for me? And the bit where Nick Fury basically, um, you know, throws the cards on the table when he's talking to um, to Stark and to Cap, and he goes, you know, throws them on the table, and you see the blood stains, the card of the blood stains, and that actually worked. That, that's that scene there is what gives the Avengers, you know, that's what actually puts the Avengers together. The whole the whole Avengers team. So. Technically, like if, if it wasn't for for Coulson but dying, there wouldn't be no Avengers team. So he's actually the he was a catalyst for the for the whole Avengers team. So big up to 
Colson, who went from Agent Colson, who went from Colson to Agent Colson to Director Colson, I'm sure. So yeah. So um, going back to the to the to the collectible cards, they have um you get you have that you have a standard pack there with with all the Captain America trading cards, and then you have the same pack again, but it has all the blood stains on them, like the blood stains you see in the movie. So it's pretty cool. So I'm pretty happy, man. I got that, and then I also picked up on that day. Uh, my first figurine in like 20 years, man. Like, the last figurine I bought was probably like a Spider-Man figurine when I was about, I don't know, maybe 11, 10. And um, I picked up actually uh, one in there from Planet. I picked up uh, one of the Star Wars figurines. I know they're going to be worth a, quite a lot of money, you know, sometime down the line. So I picked up one. So I got um, Captain Phasma. Pretty cool. Really, really, uh, uh, really did like that figurine. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be getting the rest of them, all the new characters of... Hopefully at the end of the month. I'm really looking forward to the film. And when it comes out, you know, I just love the mythology behind Star Wars. You know, if you guys ever, um, if you guys really want to know the, 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 the mythology and the inspiration that George Lucas got from, um, so sorry, that George Lucas got to produce the Star Wars movie in the beginning, then you have to read, um, the, what's the book? Um, the Hero's Journey. By Joseph Campbell. So Joseph Joseph Campbell is one. Like you know, he passed away a, a long time ago, but he was one of the top. He was one of the top guys in the Western world that dealt with mythology, and you know, just mythology and history. And this is where actually even Joseph Campbell, this is where basically um George Lucas got the inspiration to do Star Wars. So if you guys really want to know about Star Wars and want to know what you know how you know the, the core essence of it, pick up the book. Um, the the, the hero's yeah, the hero's journey yeah the hero's journey by joseph campbell you know i saw an app on amazon one time for like two pounds which would probably be like three dollars for you guys out there um but get the book read it and it's it's deep so you know it's 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 a good book um and you kind of understand the story even more and you understand the scenes and the and you know the the scenes they used in the movie why we from reading that book so um that's basically a bit of Star Wars news for you. Also, the Star Wars trailer came out. I haven't seen it quite yet. I was too busy. Just literally, just about ten minutes ago, I was watching um, Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Pretty cool show. I loved all of the movies, all of them. You know, um, so it's uh, the the first episode. I just watched it. it. Was it was crazy? It was intense, funny, creepy, and it was just like wow. That's one of the scenes I was like, Ugh. but it's it's an amazing show. And obviously, you got you have Bruce Campbell on, on there, Sam Raimi as well. So, you know, you can't go wrong with these guys. Um, I'm looking forward to episode two. Um, so, basically, all you got to do, guys, is switch on the channel and just watch it, man, because basically it's, it's, a, it's a very, very good show. And if you, if you haven't seen the movies, it's all, it's all good. You can, just, you can just basically just, um, you know, switch onto the TV show and just watch it. It gives you, it gives you like a synopsis of what happened anyway, so you guys kind of understand what's happening but yeah that's ash versus the evil dead so like i said i've had a lot of good stuff coming towards me the last few days i'm very happy thank you so much peace love and um light so yeah let's let's just get on to um what we literally have to talk about actually i don't really have a lot to be honest to talk about because like i said it's been a very very um a very slow week um we have the star wars trailer which just came out which, which is pretty much i just have not seen um we have new footages, we have new images and videos of um, Cumberbatch with Doctor Strange that have just popped out of the blue. Um, I believe yesterday and today they showed it had a few video clips. I did not watch the video clips, so I don't want the movie to be spoilt for me. Um, just so you guys know, when it says Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange, right, you guys have to understand something. Um, the scene, the, the images that they're depicting in from the movie, that, that that's the paparazzi has somehow snapped or someone snapped it and put it online. It's basically just, um, Cumberbatch as Stephen Strange is walking around. Um, I guess from, from what I can see from reading the comic books, he's based on his journey to basically find the, um, the, um, the ancient one, you know, who actually tra initiates him into the, the, the mystical magical arts. And then after that, he becomes Dr. Strange, you know, right now he's just Stephen strange you know so um you just see him with a beard and he's walking around with a backpack so that's, that's basically it wait that's basically it. there's no suit there's no nothing so technically they kind of had it wrong it's not really cumberbatch just doctor strange it's cumberbatch it's just stephen strange just walking 
around with a backpack. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to the film. I'm a big, um, I love the occult scene. I do love magic. Hence why I love Doctor Strange. And um, hence why I just love just the magic and the occult scene. So recommend, I, recommend Doctor, I recommend Doctor Strange to everybody out there. Um, if you want to get into the movie, into the origins, the origins of Doctor Strange, yes, you have the new Doctor Strange book from all new different Marvel, written by Jason Aaron, which is actually a very good book. It's, it's you know it's only on issue two right now. Um, it's nice, it's cool, it's in, it's, it's it is Doctor Strange. But if you really want to get the essence of Stephen of Doctor Strange and what he really stands for, and what he truly is, then try and pick up if you can find it anywhere now because it is kind of pricey to get. Um, Masterworks Volume 1, Doctor Strange, written by Stan Lee, and that will give you the essence, the, or the origin story, the first appearance of Doctor Strange, and you guys will get more into the character and what he's about by reading that first volume, you know. And then when you go into the movies, you, you kind of be clued up. But then again, if you read um, if you read the current Doctor Strange comic that's going on, you do kind of get it, but because it, it's all new different Marvel and the characters have totally been kind of rewritten and revamped, Due to the Secret Wars event that's been kicking off, you 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 don't really get get the real, but the full image or the full picture. I guess well you you do, but you don't because they're a little bit missing. So, um, you know, this Doctor Strange right now he's completely different to the Doctor Strange, the original Doctor Strange, and you'd have to read Doctor Strange and see what it looks like and uh, to, to pretty much get the, the the concept of how he's different now. But like I said, guys, if you can't find Doctor Strange. Masterworks Volume One, written by Stanley, and just pick up um, the current Doctor Strange comic, and you should be um, fine. But hunt for it. I got mine. For, I got Volume One for like thirty-five pounds when the, when the reprint came. I got it quickly, you know, because I knew it was gonna sell out. And on e on Amazon, it's like sixty, eighty, one hundred and fifty, two hundred pounds. So I was happy to actually get that in my um, um collection. You know, I'm halfway through it. I'm can't wait to read it. Um, I've got Volume 2, Volume 3, boy, it's really hard to get because Volume 3 is the first time where he actually goes into, from the, the, the magical arts into the dark arts because he actually deals with black magic and magic. So and it's the first, in Volume 3, it's the first time he actually changes the whole suit and he totally revamps. So that is a very, 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 very hard volume to get. And if anyone can find it for me, let me know. I'm grateful. I'll buy it for a reasonable price because I, I just love Doctor Strange. I love it, you know, so... Cool guy, cool character. He's weird and strange, just like me. Um, cool. Let's talk about what, um, what did I talk about? Right, one of the things I did come up and I totally forgot about this is the appearance of John Constantine in uh, the episode of Arrow that just uh, aired. To be honest with you guys, I won't go into Arrow because I don't watch a TV show. I've never watched it in my life. I know people think what. Uh, I watched it for the first time. I liked it. I only watched it because I'm a, you know, I loved, um, I do love John Constantine as a character, you know, I do love him as a character, and I loved the, um, the, the, the TV show, and I was so pissed, I was so pissed off when, um, when it got cancelled, I was like, what, how can you guys cancel the show, like, it was a good show, what irritated me was, one, they didn't end the show, two, there was no, it just, it just, they just cut it off. So I was gonna. I was thinking like, if you guys are gonna end the show, right? At least give the the, the audience an ending because it didn't really end. They just cut it off, you know. Um, you know, uh, they should just bring the show back, bring it back, put it on Netflix. Just you know, put all the episodes on, let people watch it. You know, just end it properly. But see, the problem is now because these here are trying to catch up to Marvel because this is what this is my this is what I'm trying to say. Because they're trying to catch up to Marvel and they pop, they're popping, they're pushing so many TV shows, right? Um, in a space, you know, there's, there isn't. How can I put it? You have got too many TV shows, and maybe some of them, I'm not, some of them, some of them basically are not, are not um, hitting the ratings, right? So some of them, some of them ha literally have to get ch chopped. The problem is, all the other problem is DC because they're trying to catch up to Marvel. They're doing too, they're, they're doing, they're, they're pushing too many shows, right? Too many, and it's too much. So you know they have a they have like Arrow they had Arrow, Constantine, um, I Zombie, um, Supergirl, uh, Preacher. They got uh, well Lucifer. They have uh, Legend Legends of um, uh, Legends of um, Tomorrow, I believe that's coming out as well. Um, they have Gotham, 
and they have the flash so there's so many tv shows you know and you can't accommodate all of them because from what i was hearing constantine was on on a friday at nine o'clock who's gonna watch who's gonna watch it on, on nine o'clock unless you're really ded dedicated to the show you know it's friday night everyone's out so you know but you know like i'm just saying that to basically say the show should not have been cancelled you know, I'm a big Marvel fan, but I'm a, I am love John Constantine because he reminds me, obviously, of Doctor Strange in a way. But he's just, you know, he's just, ah, oh, the show was good. The guy, that, you know, the way he played, the, the way he played Constantine looked like him. Attitude, clothing, the magic. It was just, it was, it was, he was the man for Constantine. So for them to cancel it, you know, they shouldn't, they shouldn't have done them. They should literally just give, give him his show back. So I just think, I just think, you know, they should, man. Everyone wants to see him back. And when I watched him in Arrow, I was like, yes, the episode was cool. Um, they gave you like a flashback episode. And I thought, oh, what? That was, that was, sorry, the scene where they were doing the flashbacks. And I was like, oh, what? So you're only going to give me John Constantine as a flashback. Because I thought, how's it going to tie in? And then obviously you see him at the end. He restores Sarah's soul. And then you, you just, you know, you see the, the reason, you see the energy come back, the love, the magic. And it was a pretty cool episode. And um, I was hearing that ratings actually spiked up. And it spiked up where, for the episode because of, you know, because Constantine hasn't been, you know, has been off air for since they've cut him off. So um, I was happy to see Constantine again. I really hope they utilize this, they utilize him for more. I don't know for more episodes, more cameos, or give him something, man. At least, man. I mean, come on, seriously, save. I mean, save Constantine, man. Not even, not even say save Constantine. Just bring him back. Bring him, man. You got all these TV shows. You, you, you guys are telling me you can't. Put him in like a team up book. You can't. I mean, a team up episode. You can't accommodate him with a uh, with uh, more more episodes. I mean, come on, man. Like, bring the guy back. The show is amazing, man. You know that was a. I, you know that I. I can I say? Bring Constantine, um, back. Bring him back. You got his epic guy. So that's for me. That's that's me. My run on Constantine. I know everyone that's listening to this. Be thinking, yeah. Everyone that's listening to me is thinking, yeah. Just bring him back, man. Bring the guy back. Loved it. The show was funny, intense, graphical. Uh, it had blood, guts. It had the magic, the cult. It had everything, man. And it didn't end. It did not end. That's what got me. So, you know, the book didn't even end. I mean, the show didn't even end. So at least, like I said, I'm repeating myself again. I don't care. To all you DC guys, and everyone at DC, if you can hear me, at least give us a two-hour episode, right? If you can. You know, if you can. At least give us one episode, right? Make it like a two-hour special. And just end the show. Just end it, right? End it. And then we'll see what happens to the characters at the end of the show. You know, so everyone at least gets um, peace of mind. But for them, for them guys to basically do what they did, it was... <laughs> to just end it like that, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't cool, man. So... At least do that for us, man. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's me for um, Constantine. Um, also, let me bring up one of my favourite shows that I watch, um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, season 3 has been very, very, very cool. Very, very different. Very SP in um, What I like about... What, what I do like about um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Co compared to the last two seasons, right, and within these episodes, is, the, um, is they concentrate more on the characters and they've developed... They're, they're developing the characters much, much more, and there's more, um, there's more conflict and chemistries between the characters than there has been in the last two seasons. So, um, like for example, there's there's that there's that um, there's that friction and chemistry between you know Fitz and Simmons. You know, we see them trying to um, in season one, they were like just normal, normal scientists doing their thing, trying to help her, and then they got more um, evolved. Um, you know the bit where Fitz had had the um, the brain damage, and you got back, and, you got, he, and he and he told he he, he got himself up, uh, trying to get back himself back to you know um, to where he was. Every time he tried to every time he tried to get with um, Gemma, you know things messed up. You know she you know the time where she um she left to go work for Hydra's undercover, then she came back, and then they, they were gonna get back. They were gonna get back together again, and then she got sucked into the, through that pool. Um, they were gonna have dinner. So they were going to have dinner before the portal thing. And then she disappeared into that portal for four months. She came back. She was all right. They had dinner. And then she was all messed up and crying and stuff. And then he kind of found out what it was that she left someone behind, not knowing that. Well, she told him that basically, she told him that um, 
she was with, you know, she kind of liked him, I guess, in a way, blah, blah, blah. And then Fitz was like, oh, okay, it's cool, we're getting back. But then, obviously, he does like her, so it's like, what happens between them now? You know, it's like, it's just crazy. Then you have, um, the, do you have that? You have now, um, also have the triangle of death between um, Hunter, um, probably Morse, and Ward. So, you know, Lance went to, Lance Hunter went to try to take out, Bob, uh, try to take out, try to kill Ward with, um, Agent May, but it went pear shaped. Where Ward said, "If you guys don't leave, we're gonna kill your husband," uh, which, was, which was Andrew Garner. So um, May was that to 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 um to you know to uh, <laughs> to Hunter. She was like, "Step down." He was like, "No," because remember, she he nearly killed um, his ex wife, Bobby Moore. So he nearly killed her. So he was that to get blood. So he went out to he went out for the kill. Didn't work. He missed. Mr. Shot, um, Andrew Garner, where he was, he nearly died. Um, you know, when a shot, when a shot, when a shot blew up. Um, so May kind of says to Hunter, like, you know, because of you, he nearly died. So you have now, <laughs> you have May that hates Ward, Hunter that hates Ward, Mockingbird that hates Ward, and you have May that's in, that's in basically. Uh, that may that hate Hunter, so it's it's crazy, and then you have the the chemistry now between also or the chemistry between Rosalind and you know um, Coulson, you know two different sex sets sex sets <laughs> trying to basically um, um, do the same thing, which is um, I guess they're trying to look off take uh, do the inhuman issue. Rosalind's like you know these these people are inhumans are basically dangerous. Coulson's like well they're not. She's like well they are. Some are good, some are bad. You know, instead of protecting them, oh, we're gonna do this. And Coulson's like, well, no. Um, so they're trying to they get they get to a point where they start working together, but they still don't trust each other, um, in a way. But it's funny, like what's good about the chemistry between these two is like uh, the banter, um, the one hit one hit lines because they all try to, they, they always try to basically get one over another um, another each other, and you can tell by the chemistry that you know they're actually starting to like each other. Uh, but where's it gonna go? Is it gonna go? North or South, no one knows, so I guess we'll have to watch the next few episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to, um, to find out. Um, but overall, the show's been very good for the last, in the last three episodes. Sorry, the last five or six? Let's just say season three in general. Um, it's been good. Um, you know, they've introduced more than humans. Lash, who was actually just created in the Marvel Universe just, what, last... the middle of this year, I believe? Um, in humans by Charles, so if you pick up issue one... Um, issue one, two, three, yeah, three or four. You get introduction to Lash, what he's really about. They've tweaked him up and changed him in Agents of Shield. He looks more darker, more me, more darker, I guess. Um, has the same ability, same powers, but just looks more, um, um, more. He looks more, um, he looks less, I guess, less menacing than he does in the comics. In the comics, he's, he's just, uh, he's, Dark, he's brown. Was he dark brown, red eyes, and grey hair? I believe spikes, grey spikes. In the in the in the in, the, in shield, he just looks. He's all greyed out, completely all greyed out. Um, but he, you know, he he's a bit. He's menacing, and then when you find out in just this week's episode of Shield, that you find out who he really was, and I was like, okay, everyone kind of knew who he's who who he was. But when you find out it was, um, and if you haven't seen it, you don't know who he is. Just skip this bit and listen to the lot. Just skip this put, skip this bit. So it's um, Andrew Garner, you know May's ex-husband. Everyone had a everyone had a had a feeling it would be him. I was like, hmm, it is him. It has got to be him. And it came to be. So uh, like I said, what I like about this season, of, this so this season so far of Agents of Shield is is that it's very very. It's more about the characters and their interaction, and it's about what they're all trying to accomplish within themselves um you know so they're all having their 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 their, their dilemmas that they're trying to bring to the service deal with and then do the main mission you know which is one the inhuman mission and the hydra mission um so it's pretty um it's pretty cool pretty interesting um pretty nice um i'm really looking i'm really looking forward now to the next episode of agents of uh of shield really 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 do 
And I'm actually going to start watching The Arrow from I did like the last episode or the only episode I watched. And I need to watch The Flash as well, you know. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the that's pretty much um, what I've been doing, I guess, within this week. So it's been kind of like a slowish week, um, you know. Um, let's just go on to basically talk about um, this week's number ones that I copped. And um, before we do that, let me speak about a certain comic book that I just I got as well. So it's on issue number two, um, written by Brian K. Vaughan, artist is Cliff um, Chang, Matt Wilson on the colours, um, Jard K. Fletcher doing the le- letters and design. And this is Paper Girls um, issue two. And if you don't know who Brian K. Um, Vaughan is, He's actually the guy that's re- he's actually the guy that's currently writing also Saga of Image Comics. Um, Paper Girls also basically is about sorry Paper Girls also under Image Comics as well. And um, this is issue two. You know what I, I will say this right from just looking at the covers of issue one and issue two. I just love the the art the the art covers and I love the, I just love like the, the front covers they're using from um, for Paper Girls. It looks so nice, so smooth, like. Just, just if you feel the front cover, if you feel the actual cover, it's all nice and um, soft. And so far, issue one, issue two have all been wraparound covers, which is um, pretty cool. Because um, I do like wraparound covers, and I'm really happy. But I'm really happy to get issue two because I really enjoyed issue one. Um, issue two again, um, just to give you a, a just to give you a, a, a synopsis of what issue one is about. A bunch of paper girls just throwing paper to people's doors, doing what they do, which is paper girls, and then they they something happens, right? And they come across a very very crazy um, a very very crazy adventure that involves them seeing things that they thought they would never see in their life, and the adventure kicks off um, literally um, from there. Um, it involves bad language. It involves zombies. It involves um, <laughs> dinosaurs in this in this issue. It involves a lot, and you still we're still trying to figure out literally what's happening in this book, and it's it's pretty amazing. So I would say this again. This is another fantastic issue. Um, we get more into depth for basically what these girls are doing. I guess what they're trying to do. Um, and what they're trying to do is basically just find out what the hell was going on. You know, they try to get help, go to their families. You know, their families ain't there. Um, they're trying to figure out who these guys are that, that basically that were um, that were trying to beat them up in um, in episode sorry in issue one. And um, it's pretty, it's pretty, um, it's pretty an amazing book. Because it's just so basic, but it's just so intense. It's not even intense. It's just so. It's just so good, man. It's a very, very good read. So, for mission one, you know, um, for mission one, like some synopsis was these paper girls are just dashing paper around, throwing paper around. Um, they come across these guys, which are basically dressed up like dressed in ninja suits. These guys should try to attack them. They steal their walkie talkies. The paper girls go after them. They find the. Uh, a machine it turns on and it starts to make a very very weird noise and they it, and then they get all anxious and they, they get out and then they see that sh- this um this this machine just shoots up into um, into the sky and, it, and then this guy the, the sky starts turning purple and then they just find a little device uh from one of the guys that try to from one of the guys in the ninja suits that try to kill them i guess and then adventure starts from there. And issue two basically is about them just trying to find out what the hell is what, what is going on in the neighborhood. You know, um, um, they start seeing things in the sky. They they they, they start getting chased. Um, they don't know what is going on or what is happening. Um, but it has this 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 episode. Sorry, can see an episode. This issue has a lot of turns, a lot of twists that makes you think, "Wow, like, what is going on?" And uh, what I like about this issue also. You still don't really, you still don't know what's going on in the book. Like it's more of an introductory. It's more of like, um, it's more of like, um, still literally building up into the big moment, which, 
which still hasn't come about. So um, again, it's it's very it's, it's amazingly written. The artwork is amazing, and because um, the way Brian um, Brian K. Vogel, the way he writes, he writes so short. Um, it makes it very very easy and very very quick to read than a normal comic. Than you know, compared to other writers that write very very. Um, that write very that write a lot. Someone like Scott Schneider who writes so so much, so it takes you kind of a lot to um to um to read it. Uh, but it's very quick, very cool, and it's just it just makes you think like what, literally like what is going on in this book? Like what is what is this what is this um what is what is really happening with the paper girls? You know what is really happening with these girls? And what's happening? What's trying to what's happening outside? Why is there monsters? Why is there why is the sky purple? Why is there dinosaurs floating around? Um, you know, but it's really good because what I like about this book also, it goes more into the characters than anything else. Reading this book, honestly, reading this book for me was like reading issue one and just issue one of Saga, where it started with very, very just normal and cool, and it just, it just went to something. It just went into something really, 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 um, <coughs> really, really deep, really big, and, and that's where the adventure kicks off. So, from reading this book, I know that that this whatever he's got has planned for this book it hasn't it hasn't even kicked off yet. Um, but again, I recommend this book to literally anybody out there. Um, one, good, one good thing about Image Comics is, which is why why um what I like is if you're not into, for example, Marvel, DC, Image, or if you're not, for example, like I said, into your basics, which is Marvel, DC Comics. Um, for people that, for people that are new to you know to Image Comics, Image Comics are self created, so um their own the only thing the only comic books that Image produces what you have created yourself. So there's no Spider Man, none of nothing that's been recreated before. It's just your own creation, so which makes the books so like always said in the past, so addictive and so consumed because you know it, um, they are so addictive. Image comics, especially if you get a book that you really really like. And just to recommend a few books from you guys from Image comics that you probably would like. This is my recommendation, personal recommendation. Uh, Paper Girls Saga. Sorry, Paper Girls. Um, Paper Girls. Saga, Black Magic, which just came out just last week, um, The Beauty, um, Rat Queens, um, Invincible by Robert Kirkman, top book. This is how the Superman story should have been, basically. It's an amazing book. It's just rebooted, so you guys can get into it now. Um, the Walking Dead, which I don't, you know, I've never read, but it's it's a top book out there, so I'm going to recommend, recommend that to everyone because it's such a big hit regarding the TV show. Um... What else? What else? Are my, what else? Are my image comics. Um, Chew, which is supposed to be really, really cool. Um, Lazarus, which is supposed to be a very amazing book. So there's some of the books um, that I recommend from image, from, from image Comics, which I really do. Um, the next one is um, a book that I always I just came out this week and. And it pretty much, um, it was funny because with this book, let me show you guys first. So <laughs> what the book is called, um, the book is called Monstrous. Um, the writer is Monjul Liu and the artist is Sana Takeda. Um, letterer Ross Walton, editor Jennifer M. Smith. So this is Monstrous issue one. It's a very, 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 um, it's a lot of pages. It's a very, very big book. So this book cost me four nine five of oh, five dollars. I remember I went to the comic book, shop, comic book shop. I got all my comics. I saw it there and I was like, Nah, I'm not gonna get it. Cause, you know, I was like, I'm short. I'm short of money. I'm not, I'm not gonna get it. But when I saw it, you know, because it was a lot. There wasn't really a lot out there, so it was low. Um, it was a lot. I was uh, from looking at it, it was like a low print because there wasn't a lot of a lot of them on the on the shelf. So I left it. I was like, you know, forget it. I'll probably come back. And pick it up. So I came out the next day. I got my agent calls and trading cards, and I checked them online. I saw that it was going for a lot of money. One, and from what I can see, it's because it was a low print run, and it kind of introduced. It kind of interested me um, because um, I remember reading the synopsis, and it said it, talk, it mentioned demons and magic and stuff like that. You know what? <sighs> After buy this night to find out what it's about. Because like I said, I love um, I love the magic and the whole scene. Um, so I picked it up, so, this is Monstrous Issue 1, um, just to give you a synopsis, just to give you basically, because I'm not going to spoil it for anyone, because I would, I would like everyone to literally, to go and get a copy, um, 
it's about a slave girl who gets captured as a slave and things kick off from there um it's very it's raw it's graphical it's very it's very dark um it's very intense it's very it's very dark in its way um what i like about the book is is um you find about this slave girl she's she's um she's been she's she's hiding something that you get to see what it is when you actually are reading the book um she's very powerful in her own way and then you find out what her latent powers and what her powers are really about in the course of the book um the artwork is amazing it's very dark using very dark colors that actually go with the tone of the book um it starts off very very slow to get into but then when you start and kind of getting the the gist of what's happening you kind of see what it's about and then you'd be like okay cool this is what it's really about um you know like i said um the slave girl she has a lot of potential man like the stuff that she can do and that she has that she does it's totally amazing um it's a, it's a very good read it's a very good book um and there's a big twist in this in this book as well that makes you think hmm really interesting what's going to happen next um so issue two should be very very interesting i'm really looking forward to see what happens to um what really happens to this person in issue two because um it's really really it's very dark in its way and you never really suspect that from um you knew you wouldn't really suspect the tone of it as you're actually reading the book you'd be thinking okay so it's another seems all right when you're like whoa you know like what is really happening there um but i like um i guess what i like about um in this book is there's a lot there's a lot of um commentary and and interaction between the character and the main characters so you kind of see a lot more story um you see a lot more story than um i guess scenes of um fighting and stuff even though there is there is scenes of fighting but um you see more story that adds t- that adds to um to the fighting but when you do see the fight scenes they're very intense they're very um amplified with rage they're very emotional um you know and you kind of see literally at the end why the slave girl is you know why is she so emotional why this she's so you know she's violent in her own way mentally and physically and all the answers pretty much they do they get answered in the book so to a certain extent so when you read issue two you're kind of clued up what i love about this book also i just love um, the way i'm um, the front cover it's, an, it's a wraparound cover as well it's pretty amazing it's pretty dark it's pretty cool it reminds me like just looking at something um it's like front cover it reminds me for some reason of thor i guess I don't know. It has that the Asgardian feel to it. Watch from from seeing the front cover. Um, the back cover is pretty cool. Has a has an eye, an open eye, which is looks pretty amazing. Um, which is carved actually into the slave girl's um, you know, um, chest. So you don't actually they reveal a little bit about this girl, but not a lot. So I'm assuming in in the coming up issues or the next issue, you find more about. That where she's from what she really is and what she could potentially do and why she's really doing what she's doing and what what she actually wants to accomplish and do because you don't really get that so the writer's purposely kind of hid that away to a certain extent so you're only get like a a, a, um, a hint of what's re- what, what's happening uh but i do recommend this to literally anybody i do recommend this um if you're a fan of like i said um blood magic um uh, Feels like very graphical to a certain extent, and this is for you. But I really enjoyed it. I will be picking up issue two just to find out where this story is going to. Um, I'm actually my oh, dig it. I'm actually just getting it on the graphic novel because I'm collecting so many comic books, especially image. Um, so yeah, man, this is basically this is um that was sorry um monstrous issue one. Um, the next one basically is um Deadpool. Um, written by um, Jerry Duggan, uh, penciler Mike Hawthorne, uh, inker Terry Pallot, 
color um, colorist Val Staples and cover artist uh, Tony Moore. Um, so basically, this is part of all new different Marvel. Um, so this is basically eight months after Secret Wars has um, finished. I'm talking about Secret Wars is coming up next week. Will be issue seven of Secret Wars, and then there's two more issues up to issue nine, and then the whole Secret Wars is done. We get to finally find out what's happened to all these characters, um, which is pretty going to be pretty amazing. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um. What can I say about Deadpool, guys? It's it's um it's a totally mess. It's a, he's a totally messed up character. Does what he wants. Wait, what wants? Does what he wants when he wants. And obviously, Deadpool, Merc with a mouth because he has a mouth on him. But again, that's Deadpool for you guys. Uh, this issue basically to certain it's it's just um the whole book is about basically I guess the book from reading this book is basically about um. Who is Deadpool? Because you find out there's a lot of Deadpools that are in this comic book, but they actually are not the original. They're not the. It's not the Deadpool. So in a sense, and then you have all of them that are so-called working for this Deadpool, a certain a certain Deadpool, who's supposed to be the main Deadpool, I guess the, the original Deadpool. Um, so he's basically training. He's getting them to do missions and make money for him. So I'm thinking in my head that's not what Deadpool does. You know, he takes missions, but he doesn't need a team. So even though they try to say in this book that this guy is the main Deadpool, um, I don't think he is, or maybe he is. But it's a very, very weird concept. It's a very, very weird storyline. But um, um, it was it was humorous. It's funny. It's it's a bit weird at the same time because you don't really know who's who. You don't know which Deadpool is the real Deadpool, and I don't think. From what I can see, there is no, um, from what I can see, my personal opinion is whoever they say the main Deadpool is in this book, it's not him. So I'm assuming in the next few, maybe episodes or sorry, issues that you're going to see the, 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 the real Deadpool. Or maybe he is the real Deadpool, no one knows. But it's, it's, it's more like, uh, is it really him? Isn't it him? Overall, it's funny, it's humorous. You know, obviously, you, it's, it's funny, it's humorous, it's twisted in its own way. And I do like it. I mean... I do like Deadpool. The only reason I got this issue was to find out basically what, what was, what's happened in all the, the Marvel Universe regarding, you know, the Secret Wars event. So as soon as you basically go into, like, when you open up the, um, what do you call it, the first page, all you hear, what you see is eight months later. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. So, um, it's pretty cool. Artwork is, I can't complain. The artwork is, a, it's, it's on point. It's cool. I will say this every time. Every time they do a Deadpool comic book, the artwork is always amazing for some reason. Uh, I guess because he sells a lot. He's a top character, and because of the movie that's coming up as well, um, they're trying to perfect him even more. I guess. But overall, you know, guys, Deadpool. It's not going to be recommended to anybody. Just read it. It's Deadpool. Um, it's it's it is the 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 dialogue is pretty nice. Um, you get to see more Mercs. Literally a lot of Deadpools with their mouths. Um, it's pretty, to a certain extent, it's pretty, it's uh, pretty humorous to see all, all these Deadpools in one place talking to each other. But then you're thinking, who is actually the real Deadpool, or is he the real Deadpool? No one knows. So, uh, again, pick this one up, guys. Pick it up. Um, Deadpool, issue one. Um, right. The next one is um. Extraordinary um, X Men by Jeff Lemire, artist Humberto Ramos, and the Inca Victor Olbaz Olzaba. Don't know if I pronounced it right. I haven't, I do apologize. Uh, colorist Edgar um, Delegado and letterer Joe Carm Carmagana. Um, so Extraordinary X Men is basically um, based, um, literally, the team for Extraordinary X Men is so you people know is Iceman Storm, um, one mysterious character that m makes his return, which I'm not going to tell you. Um, Magic, um, Jean Grey, and a mysterious character that makes his appearance. That makes sorry, amazing character. 
that makes his appearance in the book and joins the team. And another very, very long lost amazing character that makes his way back and joins the X-Men team. But Storm is the leader. And of course we have a very, very we have a mysterious return of a very mis- of a of a person that's been missing from the X-Men universe for um a very, very long time. So um what this book is about basically in a sense um it's basically about it's preserving i guess the x-men bloodline because what happens is now um just so you people know in general with how when marvel have now introduced um when um when marvel have introduced in humans into the universe what's happened is now basically is that um the tetrahedron gas becomes very deadly and toxic to mutants so it's killing them off um, so what it is now in this book, basically, um, Storm tries to gather as much X-Men so she can basically, in a sense, be one with all the mutants out there. Um, what secondly happened, what's more, what's happening even more is because of the, what's happening more now is a lot of the mutants are getting prosecuted, killed even more than before. So they're, they're getting wiped out, um, you know, left, right and center because also the tetrahedron gas, which is killing them, you know. Storm is basically trying to go and recruit more X Men and just to basically to preserve, I guess, the the line because you know they're all dying out in one sense. Um, the other thing which is totally nuts is there's another thing that, that there's another thing that the tetrahedron gas is doing to the mutants, which I will not tell you because I want to spoil it for you. Uh, but it's really, really, it's nuts, guys. It's nuts when you hear what it is. Um, but read it and find out. Um, overall, it's just basically the book is loving about kids fighting. Uh, this issue is loving about fighting. Um, you know, an adversary or killing or it's basically just about them trying to basically live life and basically live, you know, because the race in the way is getting destroyed by this gas. Um, so it's, it's very, I guess this is more, um, this book is about, in, in, this issue one is more of Storm and her X-Men on the mission trying to basically do what they have to do. And it's more, I guess, it's more emotional than anything else for these characters because, you know, they've gone through everything, right? They've gone through, they've lost people, people have died. They fought uh, everyone you could probably imagine, but it's never got to the point of where they've been actually getting, they've been getting wiped off the planet because of uh, the tetrahedron gas. I'm assuming that, um, I think there'll be like an event one day that Marvel will do like X-Men versus humans. And it'll be an interesting um It'll be an interesting event if he was actually to do that, just to get these two, these two races fighting each other, which is going to be be totally not. You never know. You probably have like a a team up book called Uncanny in Who X Men or something, where they have a combination of Inhumans and X Men in one book. Uh, but overall, if you, what's good about this, because obviously, um, you know, if you're an X Men fan and um, you want to jump into, for example, the comics right now, it's a good time because with Secret Wars, you know, the reboot, destroying the Marvel Universe and the Ultimate Universe, Marvel pushing out all so many, so many, so many number ones that you can get, you, you can basically just get into. So getting the Extraordinary X-Men issue one, basically, in a sense, is um, you get in introduced into the X-Men Universe and what's happening with them. And if you like it, you can continue collecting, you know, but, I, you know, um, it's a good read, it's a good book. I don't think I'll be getting issue one because I have to cut back on a lot of comics, so I might get this on trade, but I'll be definitely giving um Uncanny X Men when it reboots and comes out again because I'm looking forward to reading that. You know, I do love Uncanny X Men for some reason, I just love it. I love it. Um art- artwork in this book here, Extraordinary X Men is on point, amazing, cool, sweet. Um the twist in this where you see the return of a, of a major character that everyone's like, huh? Really? He's there? Yeah, he's there, man. He is there. Or is she there? Da, 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 da. So um, watch out for it, guys. This is X-Men. Extraordinary X-Men written by Jeff Lemire. Issue 1, which is literally out now. Um, so get it, man. Have a have a, have a a wonder. Have a wonder and a ponder to see if you would like this or not. Um... Right, the next issue. Oh, wait, guys. Wait, wait, wait. Before I continue, oops, my uh, my Mac, which is what I'm using to, to record this podcast, has told me I've got 5% battery life. 
And the last thing I want is for this to switch off while I'm recording. So, here we go. As you can hear that, that's... That's my, you know, that's my plug, man. So I need to charge, stick this in, stick this wire in before... Um, whoa. Am I safe? Am I safe? Nope. Am I safe? Yes, I'm safe. You know, stick it in before... Uh, my max which is off and I start going inhuman on people for not having this podcast um completed I guess um the next book I am um, ooh take a deep breath ooh yeah the next book is basically <laughs> a book that I had my eyes set on uh, when I read the synopsis of it, um, I believe just two weeks ago, and um, it's it's called Citizen Jack from Image Comics. So Image Comics, Citizen Jack. Um, it's called. It's by Sam, um, written by Sam Humphreys, artist Tommy Patterson, colorist John Ildrink. Letterer Rachel Deering, uh, designer uh, Dale and Todd, a big red robot, <laughs> um, editor Jeannie Scaffer, uh, you got your cover artist um, Tommy Patterson and Dale and Todd, and the variant cover by Chip Zodsky. Uh, Zats- I believe this is the this is the variant I actually have. Um, this book is very. F- it's very. F- I got it because it it, it mentioned in the synopsis, uh, being a president, a drunk, and involving demons and magic. And I was like, "Yep, yeah, I'm definitely getting this book." Um, so basically, it's all it is. Basically, it's about I guess it's a low down drunk that basically wants to run for president, and um, for some reason he has a demon with him that is wants to help him. Uh, help, uh, Mr. Jack here. But Jack is like, no, 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 I'm not. Help- you know, I don't need your help. And um, this is where this is where it kicks off. It's very, it's very creepy. It's very raw. There's a lot of um, it's very raw. It's very creepy in its own way. Um, it it starts off very, very, very slow, very, very slow, and it slowly starts picking up pace. Um, maybe like halfway through the book when things start to get really, really raw and really uh, interesting. Um, what I like about it is just the concept that basically, in a sense, he wants to be president, whatnot, and he try he makes he's trying to make a you got that you have this demon that's trying to make a pack with him, saying, you know, if you do this for me, you know, I will do this. He's like, Well no, 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 no. But it's very interesting uh, to it's based in the sense say, it's it's a book about you know what would you do you know would you sell your soul to the devil or to the demon for just a bit of uh, a bit of fun or to get what you really wanted? Um, but overall, it's very um, it's um it's like I said, it's, it is a bit creepy in its own way, but it, it it is very like every every page you read, it's very um, it's very humorous. Um, it's very bright. What I mean by bright also is the um, the art in this is very colourful and very bright. So it stands out every every panel, every page that you read, you see a lot of colour. Um, which is pretty nice. Um but yeah, I, I you know <laughs> what can Jack do for you? I, I did enjoy it because it was just um it was just it was very humorous. In its, in its way, but just the fact that you had like a you have a demon in the background trying to manipulate and uh, talk to this guy and tell him to do this and do that would made it even more I was like yes. When I was, when I heard, like I said when I heard about, heard about that in the synopsis, I was like yeah, I'm definitely getting this. I'm gonna definitely see what um what happens uh, in the next episode. What do I keep saying episode for? Ah, in the next issue. Whew. I think I keep. I think I, I think I'm, I keep saying episode because I need to, I need to watch the next episode of one of my favorite TV shows again, The Blacklist. So you probably be watching that tonight after this podcast. Uh, maybe even tomorrow. Who knows? But yeah, I have episode six there, just waiting, 
waiting to basically um waiting to basically just be played by um by me. So um yeah man, Citizen Jack is uh it's it's very <laughs> it it you'd have to be patient with it when you start reading it. Because like I said, it gets very it's very slow in its own way, but it does pick up. Um but I do recommend it just so um you know, so people I don't know, I recommend it because it's something that I'm interested in, but I I think a lot of people would actually watch it because it kind of deals in politics as well, which is what's happening in the world. <laughs> or on a different scale, I guess. So um you pro people probably warm up to it and be like, oh, okay, cool. But it is it is funny, man, in its own way, and I'm really looking forward to picking up issue two. Uh this guy Jack, he's a he's I guess he's a bum, he doesn't care, he he drinks, doesn't care about life. <clears throat> but he wants to be president. And it looks like he's gonna do anything and everything to basically to get that um to get to get and make that wish come true. Um so yeah, that's Citizen Jack issue one, which is available at your local comic book shops right now. Um Give it a go, guys. Let me know what you guys and girls think. Remember, you can always hit me up on the Instagram at Two British Nerds. Comment any of my pictures, or and uh, let me know what you guys and girls think of any of the reviews that I've um, just re reviewed. Or if you, you know, if you wanna, if you have anything you wanna say regarding comic books, questions, anything, man, just hit me up on Instagram at Two British Nerds. Um, mention me in the pictures or comment on mine, or just keep it nice and simple. Hit me up on the, the Gmail at two British nerds at gmail.com. Let me know what you people think. Ask me anything, guys. No feedback is bad feedback. Um Right, the next one is my last one that I'm gonna review. And I would say I have all the books that I've read so far. Um period, right? And even what like Whew Put on the guys. Got tired out of the blue, you know. Um, what was I? Oh, well, I nearly, I nearly knocked out right there. Uh, I have all the number ones that I've got recently, right? Uh, I would say I have all the Marvel, I have all the Marvel books as well because this is a Marvel book that I'm going to review. Uh, this book here is unsettling. It's creepy. It's twisted. It's very, very subtle and subtle in its own way, and I would never expect it. Expect um. <laughs> I would never expect it from this character and this book. Um, so when I when I when I purchased, I didn't purchase it. Well, so I didn't purchase it. You know, when I flipped through the book in Forbidden Planet, I was like, oh, okay. And I, look, I went to the last page, and I was like, whoa. So I was like, is this really happening, right? So I thought, you know what? For this to happen, I have to buy this book to find out what what happens. And um, I was blown away. Believe me. Um, so, just, uh, I haven't told you guys the name of the book. This is the Vision. So, the Vision from the Avengers: Age of Ultron. The Vision is getting his own solo book. Um, so, it's written by Tom King, um, artist Gabriel Hernandez Walter, uh, colorist, sorry, color artist uh, Jordi Bellera, um, letter and production Clayton Cowles, um, cover artist. Mark Domondo, and uh, Hip Hop Variant, um, Ryan Spook, Marcos Martin, uh, Vanessa, uh, Vanessa Del Rey, Hip Hop Variant, um, Chris Robinson, Assistant Editor, Will Morse Editor, Executive Editor, Tom Bravo, uh, Editor in Charge, A uh, Axel Alonso, Chief Creator Officer, Joe Cosida, um, Publisher Dan Buckley, executive pro um, producer Alan um, Alan Fine. Um, so to give you to give you just a quick synopsis, um, the Vision has a family, and from his he has a family, everything's going good, and then it just goes, and then then that's when everything just kicks off. Uh, it, I, it's like, it was, from reading this book, it was like reading, it was like what you would expect to find in the image comic, because I, I guess an image comic is, it, it tends to be very dark, very intense in its own way, depending on what the book is about, and, um, it just goes a bit nuts, right, because image comics don't really have any barriers in a sense, you know, that, you know, you, they just go in, so, 
um, you have it's a diff- if you're thinking this is like a different aspect to the vision that you if you think this is the vision from Age of Ultron and what you read previously is completely um, completely different and the reason is because I'll give you I'll give you the synopsis on the first page so you guys know because you haven't read if you haven't read um, Avengers Zero then this is what you missed out so it says recently the vision purged his, purged the emotions associated with his memories from his hard drive in order to keep his processing system running smoothly but the consequences of this action have yet to be fully realized Da-da-da-da. um so it starts with uh, you know he starts with his, with his family goes to work does a superhero thing his wife and his kids are there and then that's when things start to be there okay and then things drastically just switch and it just turns out to be very intense very insane but it's it in general it's, it's a very the way the interaction with, he interacts with his family and they interact with him it's very very it's just like it's very creepy it's creepy it's weird it's cool they're not evil or anything but you know are they you don't know um it's just very very weird very intense very creepy very subtle even the the artwork just goes with that tone which is like what is going on in this book um it's like reading for me i guess it was like reading um the when just a f- uh, was it just a few months back well about six seven months ago when um you know the, the magneto the magneto run was going on and it was like had that sort of that magneto's book was very very dark and very intense when magneto was killing anyone and everyone in every page in every in every uh issue uh this is slightly more darker because it's just the vibe of it is just weird nuts creepy intense and unsettling and it's something you wouldn't would not expect it from marvel comics especially from this character and um and this is why i was so surprised with this book but it's a, it has a very 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 crazy twist that will make you think like what is going on you know what is going on people um, but I do recommend it because I've never, I would never expect it from this character or this type of, you know, yeah, this type of character, I guess. Or, you know, or ex- even ex- even suspect this would happen in this book. Because uh, it's nuts. It's a very nice, twisty turn that makes you like, whoa, man, what's going on? But yeah, if you like something that's twisted, creepy, unsettling, that's going to make you think to a certain extent. Then this is the book for you, the vision. Um, if you're a fan of image comics and the way they are, uh, I think if this was like a if the vision, it this could like this could, because it, this could easily be like an image comic just because of the way it's written, the tone. Um, it's nice, man. I I have to give a lot of respect and love to the writer, man. Um, you know, Tom King and, and the artist Gabriel Handanas because they did a very very excellent job working together and, and pushing that tone of art. And that tone of story to mix and give this book literally life as, you know, as they did. So it's an amazing read. I literally recommend it to anybody. To Not even that, anybody. If you're a fan of the vision and you want to see a different aspect to the vision, then check it out. But if you want something that's going to stun you, make you think, then yeah, this one, this one is out for you guys. So with that being said, guys, this is pretty much... Um, it for um for this week's um podcast please check us check me out check me out every thursdays and fridays but this podcast will be done and uploaded on to um the youtube page which is two british nerds of the z um itunes as well two british nerds of the z and my you know, be on soundcloud as well so soundcloud.com forward slash dj Sava. that's me that's dj c-a-v-a and my new dj um podcast will be up soon so watch out for them um if you have any questions you want to ask if you want me to sp- i don't know speak about a certain topic if you have any comments reviews if you want me to review a certain book however if you have any idea suggestions um that you that you want to put in please just let me know and i'll get back to you guys asap um like I said, hit me up on the website. Sorry, my my uh, the email, two British nerds with a Z at gmail.com. Uh, you can always tweet me as well at C A V A D J on my Twitter and Instagram. Basically, um, Instagram. 
Why do I always forget? Instagram, two British nerds as well. So um, that's basically it for me, guys. I'll catch you guys um, next week. And enjoy the rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, and night, wherever you are in the world. And keep it blessed, man. Take it easy. Peace out. Yeah, DJ Server, two British nerds, signing up. Bye.